it can be pretty confusing for someone who's not very familiar with wireless networking to walk into a store and be confronted with all these letters and acronyms such as A, B, G, N, MIMO, WEP, WPA, etc. So I put together this brief history lesson, so to speak, in order to help put everything into perspective. Wireless networking first became popular around 1999 with 802.11b. It still wasn't nearly fast enough to keep most consumers happy. The only other option that was available to them was 802.11a and since it worked on a totally different frequency than 802.11b it was totally incompatible. So, so if you wanted to upgrade the speed of your network you need to go off and buy all 802.11a gear. Now on the flip side, while 802.11a was quite a lot faster than 802.11b, its range was only about half that of 802.11b. Since 802.11a ran on the much wider 5 gigahertz frequency range, it had a much harder time penetrating walls and other barriers than 802.11b's narrower 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Another disadvantage of 802.11a and b was that as computers became faster the security called WEP or Wired Equivalent Privacy was becoming easier and easier to hack. As a result of these difficulties wireless networking did not really take off until around 2003 when the 802.11g standard was introduced. 802.11g combined the advantages of 802.11b and 802.11a with a maximum speed of 54 megabits per second and a range of 150 feet. Since it was on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range it was not compatible with 802.11a but it was compatible with 802.11b. 802.11g also introduced two new more secure wireless encryption methods called WPA and WPA2. WPA stands for Wireless Protected Access and, and uses TKIP as its encryption method. WPA2 uses a much stronger type of encryption called AES. Still consumers wanted a little bit more range and a little bit more performance. The only real downside to 802.11g was the fact that this 2.4 gigahertz frequency band was becoming very popular. Suddenly you had 802.11g gear running on it, you had 802.11b gear running on it, you had cordless phones, baby monitors, microwave ovens, garage door openers, etc., etc. All kinds of popular consumer electronics used the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. And this created a lot of interference issues. So what we needed was something with a little bit more range and as streaming video and music and games became more popular people started wanting a little bit more bandwidth. So manufacturers responded to this demand by coming up with their own proprietary protocols such as Super G, Range Booster, and you've heard all the names before. Typically one of these proprietary protocols would produce twice the speed and twice the range as regular 802.11g. The only problem with this is, is these were proprietary protocols meaning they were not standards that were ratified by the IEEE. So what this means is if you had a say a Super G wireless adapter and you try to make it work with a range booster router what would happen? Since they're proprietary protocols and not a ratified standard they were not compatible with each other. So while you, they would communicate, they would only communicate at the standard 54 megabits per second speed. 
So if you wanted Super G speed or range booster speed and range, you had to go out and get all Super G or all range booster gear. 